Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike, but together we are Modeling for, for Advantage. Well, Willie, mate, here we are. We've got a Team Yankee unboxing for you today. Hey, Team Yankee. Not done Team Yankee yet. No, you've played Flames of War, but you're not oh, playing yes. Team Yankee. Yeah. Right? So this is the T-72 Tank Battalion Warsaw Pact Starter Force. So um, there's two sets that came out. One is the kind of BMP infantry set, and this is the Tank Force to go alongside. It's a new bits in here. So do you want to tell them what's in the box while I open uh. these box? Seven T-72 BM or basic T-72 tanks. Five T-55 AM2 tanks. Two BRDM2s, SA Gaskin or Spandrel vehicles. Two MI-24 high-end helicopters. Two SU-17, SU-22 fitter fighter bombers. Mm. Four flight stands, eight rare earth magnets. One A5 rule book. One. One start here booklet and 30 unit cards. Very nice. All right, we're gonna sort out these piles and we'll be right back. Well, mate, there's a lot of plastic in here. We've got our piles organized, not our piles, <laughs> not as in, you know, that other thing. We'll yeah. talk about the paper first, then we're gonna go through the units one at a time. So first thing you get in here, I love these little start here guides. Um, you see this every time I open them up for you. You've got build instructions in there. Um, the only thing worth bearing in mind about this is if you're buying this as a first time a starter army, then absolutely just follow these instructions. But for an existing player who's already got a collection, you can build several variants of many of these kits and all the parts are usually on the, on the sprues but they've only provided the instructions for the things they're directing you to build in here. If you want to build a particular variant of T-55, which it's not showing you, get on their website and there'll be information about how to do that, usually. Yeah, familiar with the Flamers of War, if you want a particular variant, you can go see the build instructions. Yeah, just exactly. Put, just put the sprue code in the corner. Yeah, absolutely. And... That's the job. All right, that's the bit of paper. You need a little baggy. Now, you might have overlooked this because you get a Flames of War Team Yankee manual in all of their starter sets and starter armies. I think I've got a million of these, just toss it on the pyre. But in here, we will, when we get to the aircraft kit later, you'll see the new SU-22. Is it 22? Uh, 1722. 1722. Yeah. It's a third party kit, so it's got separate build instructions because they've come from someone else. Yeah. Yeah, and that's in with your manual. Last of the paper comes in this baggie. We have got our decal sheets and unit cards. And boy, are there a lot of unit cards in here because this isn't a Soviet Union or Russian Federation. This is Warsaw Pact Minor. So you've got Poles, Czechs, East Germans, and I think you might also have Soviet yeah, cards in here. Yeah, the picture's got Soviet on it, yeah. Yeah. So you're getting, you're getting four versions of all of these. Um, headlines, differences. The poles are probably in the middle in terms of quality. Um, the Czechs are usually the cheapest. And the Germans tend to have somewhat better skill levels, but they don't have access to the good equipment. Um, and then, of course, you've got your decal sheets. You get two of the... The numbers, you know, the, the the numbers, and then this nice little national characteristics one. So you stick a you stick your little yellow and red one on there, and saying this is a Polish hind rather than a rather than a Soviet one. All right, so the bits that you get, they're nice. So the T seventy two Panzer Battalion. This is the headquarters. You buy this box. You want to make the army that comes out of this box. That's what it's telling you to build. T seventy two B. So what do you get in the T-72B Panzer Battalion? You get one headquarters of one T-72B for five points. You can add the Songster missile for an extra point if you want. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And then the units within the formation, you're required to take one headquarters and then two Panzer companies. So that is a minimum of seven tanks. The Panzer company comes through, but we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, and you're going to need to that out of here. Then you have the option of up to one T-72M or B um, tank Panzer Company, up to one Mottschutz and BMP Company, up to one Carnation Battery, up to one BMP-1 or BRDM-2 Recon Unit, up to one Schilke Platoon, 
and one Gaskin or Gopher platoon. So you've got a lot of integral units. Now, if you've bought this kit, what does that mean? That means your seven tanks are going to be split across those three companies, their headquarters. The Soviet stuff, or if you're not familiar with the Warsaw Pact stuff, what NATO calls a platoon, they tend to call companies and the units are bigger. Um, so you're going to end up with the seven tanks spread across the headquarters and the other two companies, and they're all going to be T-72Bs if you're building it straight out of the box. Your two Gaskins are integral, so that's okay. But that means your T-55s and your Hinds are going to be support options in there. All right? So the T-72 itself, the T-72B has got... Explosive reactive arm at infrared special roll. It's still got that skill three. It's got skill three plus, which is good. It's a really good skill rating for uh, Eastern forces. It is still hitting a three though. It's got 18 front armor, nine side and two on the top. Tactical is 10, and, you know, cross country dash 24. Similar mobility to what you'd expect. And it's got the 125 mil 2A46 gun, which has got an anti-tank rating of 22, firepower of two. If you play Flames of War, it's the same system, just the numbers have got bigger. Um, halted and moving rate of fire one, that's the autoloader thing, that's how it models them. It's not affected by speed, but the non autoloader stuff gets two shots stationary, usually. Um, anti tank, yeah, 22, firepower two up, brutal laser rangefinder, and a stabilizer. Yeah. <coughs> so, what a stabilizer. It can make, right, the stabilizer rule is interesting. We've seen something similar somewhere else. The Sherman. If you stay st if yeah, yeah, but this works quite differently. Though. Yeah. So this, this, more, this more modern stabilizer, um, what you've got is you can make a 14 inch tactical move rather than a 10. But at that point, you do get a plus one hit penalty and you can't fire your machine gun. So it's saying it's the main gun can fire on the move at, at and yeah. So, because um, the thing with the speeds of a lot of this stuff, you'll see most vehicles, even in the, the Flames of War, they can make a 10 inch tactical move. Because that's about how fast you can go and still keep an eye on, yeah. you know, that's how the game has decided to model that. That's not really about the performance of the vehicle, that's about the performance of a human being using the Mark One eyeball and the Mark One brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the stabilizer allows certain vehicles in this one, can push up to 14, but you can't fire machine guns at that point. You're just going too fast, it doesn't work. <laughs> so that, that's it, that's interesting. 14 inch tactical move is rarely going to make much of a difference, but it, it could be pivotal, especially when you're making that dash yeah. for objectives at the end. So, um, the T72B, uh, the sprue, have you had a have you have you I've waved got the one sprue. at them? I've, right, I've waved one at them, yep. you wave one at them. So, the T72 sprue is one of their early ones, and you can. You can see that because of the amount of space on there. I'm just wondering, I'm just looking for a date here. Does it say it's tiny what? 2015. 2015, yeah. 2015. So this is an this is an early one. I mean, you know, if you've ever watched the news about any conflict ever, you've seen some T-72s. Yeah. They are mm. the export model. But as a kit, it's decent. The only yeah. fiddly bit is up here you've got the smoke launchers and the smoke launchers fit onto the turret bulges at the front and they're not really keyed now they're sort of keyed but sort of not it, it it's an early kit so the reason they've done that is if you've ever seen the ch not the challenger the chieftain kit on the Chieftain kit, they moulded the smoke launchers into the turret, and they're not very crisp. It's a bit more of a sort of a blob with a few holes in it, just from the way the moulding works. So this is obviously like, well, what's the alternative? We mould them separately in the in the horizontal plane, and then the injection moulding can handle it. But the piece is really quite fiddly. So um, that's uh, that's that's the bit to watch out for and they are slightly different on the different sides yeah they, they point outwards and upwards that's the traditional t72 sprue but in this which people have been gagging for by the way 
is the armor package. Yeah. The, the ERA. So this is um, ERA, Mike. What's ERA? Explosive reactive armor. Explosive reactive armor. It goes I want bang. armor that explodes. How does that work? The force of the armor counteracts the force of the explosion. So Newton's laws, two, two bombs going off at the same time, yeah. reduces the shock wave. Yeah. Now, they were originally designed and particularly effective against hollow charge and shape charges, where it's literally an explosion going in one direction. We're going to push an explosion in the other direction. That's going to neutralize a lot of the force. Um, but kinetic penetrators, APF, SDS, stuff like that, still relies on force. And so the, the second generation of widespread use, which is what this is, Contact 5, um, it's the same kind of principle, but they're, they're like steel or aluminium coated as mm. well, which means they'll be set off by um, kinetic penetrators. And they yeah. still have some effect against armour piercing rounds. I think the, the British copper bomb is the same, isn't it? Uh, it's just internal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the, the ERA package. Now, it, it's nice that they've done this this way on one level. This is an upgrade sprue. So you get, when you buy T-72Bs, you get the regular T-72 in its entirety, and then you get this upgrade sprue. And that has meant you haven't got a million little uh, Contact 5 blocks to glue on or plates or whatever. These are just straight replacements for some of the parts. You're not going to be able to easily um, convert existing ones if you've already got some, though, because unfortunately the lower part of the turret requires yeah the lower part from the original screw. unlike some other models there's one flat there's one turret base for both turret tops because they've made this this is what you yeah. need to turn that into that um and th they, they they otherwise look there's there's other bits as well it's more about i'm not unhappy because i don't think you could easily Swap between the two because the uh, there's uh, there's the skirts and the upper hole, you know, for the contact yeah. five to be effective, you really need to be covered in it. So you wouldn't be able to just swap a turret very easily. It's more about if people wanted to upgrade, unfortunately, the yeah. existing ones. They're not going to find that too, that that too easy uh, too easy. So what do what do you know about the T seventy two then? Why is it why is it so well known? Mate? <laughs> it's, um, it's most common tank. Obviously, came into service in seventy three. Um, 25,000 of them are being built and sold. Mm -hmm. The T-72A is the Russian one. Mm. The initial export was a, the 72M, which you can make. That's about, the basic one yeah. here, I think, is the M. And then the B um, is the upgrade in 85. New, new main guns, stabilizer, sights, fire controls, and firing capable of firing a missile, although I don't think it's actually modelled on here. Oh, because um, it fires through the barrel. Oh, right, it's one of those. It's one of those, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the uh, Songster missile. Yeah, and yeah. also, um, obviously, the composite armour and uh, new and improved larger engine. So, mm. it's yeah. just everywhere. Um, the tank museum's got um, captured Iraqi ones. Um, they've got T-55s as well and 62s. Yeah, yeah. And the T-72 at the tank museum has got, a, like, a five-metre snorkel on it. Yes, they do for deep wading. Um, I've not seen the sense of it because it's, it's like I say, it's a five meter tube and that's it. And yeah. And the whole tank drives underwater. Yeah. So how do you see where you're going? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, you find a lot of Soviet vehicles that they, they've they've invested heavily in 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 river crossing. Yeah. Um, pr presumably, I mean, recognizing strategically, this is a huge problem. If you li if you live in England, you've never seen a river. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are there are there are waterways that we call rivers, and they are maybe thirty meters across. Yeah, that ain't the Volga, mate. That ain't the Rhine. <laughs> that, that's yeah. those things are half a mile across. Yeah, um, you you know this is not this is not yeah. something we can't put a bridge over this in a cup in an afternoon. Um, yeah. And it was obviously their experiences of the Second World War. So it was repeatedly we stop river. We, there's a river to cross. We yeah. stop and. They get time to breathe. Yeah. Even when we're winning. Every new river is a new problem. It's a new major operation unless we can capture yeah. bridges. Yeah. So they've invested a lot in it. So I think I think with um with a lot of I don't know whether the T fifty five has got one. Certainly the, the, the all of the modern ones do. They have these snorkels 
and they are basically a five meter tube. Yeah. Singing so, like, I think you've got about four minutes before the engine stalls. Yeah. And and then you're dead. <laughs> and yeah. they don't they don't swim. They drive. They drive the on the riverbed. Yeah. Like I say, how you see where you're going. Once you've you been... go that way, <laughs> and you don't yeah. stop because the engine will stall um, or flood, flood yeah. and then stall. Um, but they they all have now they make propaganda footage of them doing this. Yeah. But I don't know how many of them didn't do it. Yeah, um, in those. I'll refer to it later. Many I've got a book at home. It's called um, Inside the Soviet Army. It's an eighties book, and mm. one of the pictures in there is a steam train driving over a Bailey Bridge. Right. Um, as it points out in the picture, if that train's loaded with anything, then yeah, yeah, might do that <laughs> once, provided there's no loads. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but just looking at the sprue, one of the one of the little bits I've noticed is the anti mine. Yeah, wow. so that's, um, and presumably it is on here, usually with the Soviet ones, you get the T-72 tank platoon. Uh, for one point, you can fit up to three vehicles with man clearing equipment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got um, MLRS in Team Yankee, you have in-game delivered minefields. Yeah. You know, I don't, it's not just a scenario thing. It's like, no, no, I can put a minefield down during the game. Yeah. And um, to be honest, I think the way you deal with minefields with the Soviet army is you just drive a T fifty five over it. Yeah. And and so so what, mate? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. what, you've knocked that thing out, who cares? Um Yeah, so you, yeah, you do you do see them all over the place. The T seventy two itself then is developed it, there's there's two design there's multiple design bureaus in Russia. Uh, in the tank factories and what happens when they're having a new tank is they put out a competition against the spec and then they decide which one they're going to build the thing is they built the t64 and the t64 is undeniably despite being older is a much better tank but it is very expensive and a little bit like sort of tiger panther in world war ii it's a bit over-engineered. There's a lot of teething problems. There's a lot of new technology in T-64. They don't successfully export many of them. And so one of the one of the other design bureaus has, has come along looking at T-62. Can I make T-62 have the same kind of performance as T-64? And comes up with a T-72. Gets into a lot of trouble. It's like, you know, this is anti-communist thinking. This is doing harm. These are all these kind of you know, Soviet crimes that they have, which is just big catch-all terms, <laughs> saying, you're a wicked man, and we're going to send you to Siberia because of it. So is that actually a crime, being a wicked man? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so, but then he manages to com manages to convince somebody with a demonstration, T-72 goes in, and T-72 is about a third the cost of T-64. It's not quite as good. It's significantly more reliable. It's auto loader was better, but of course, as time moves on, they're able to retrofit with with some of the things learned. So there are masses of T seventy twos, but in particular, the M is widely exported, yeah. whereas the T sixty four is just too expensive. I don't think anybody has T sixty four apart from the Soviets themselves, and it, they reach a point. Um, your man at the tank museum who does YouTube videos, yeah, uh, oh, I forget his name now, but he was saying like something like thirty percent of of Soviet exports in the seventies are tanks. Yeah, in you know, in terms of rubles, like right, yeah, it's a big part of our economy. Then. <laughs> um, so that's your, that, that's your T seventy two in in the platoon. The T seventy two B, it's thirteen points for three, so it's slightly they're not quite five points a model. They're four, they're four and a bit. But is it is it is it is it worth it? Hmm. I mean, it's certainly the reason why this is packaged as a miners thing, is the miners just don't have access to anything other than yeah. T-72M, T-62 until this point. And that's relied very heavily on, on Soviet stuff to be able to take out that high-end gear, or maybe get lucky with their hands. Now, T-72B is a competitive uh, vehicle. Yeah. You know, it can't stand up in terms of firepower to the Western tanks, but it costs a lot less points, and it can deal with them. Do you want to pick a sprue then, Mike? And uh, right. we'll start doing the talking. We, we, let's, let's, let's start with the little dinky car then, shall we? The BRDM2. The BRDM2. 
two. It's, I think it's one sprue that they split up to fit into the box. Yeah, I mean, it was. It, it, this was very, like a lot of their stuff, it, it's very tightly packed, this. I don't know if you saw when I opened it, I would strongly encourage you to slide out rather than pull out, take the whole thing out and do it that way. You might do some damage to the sprues. And they do do a bit of chopping to, to make it fit. So this was in the box like that. But they're basically two halves. So this kit builds you, I'll get the stats, it builds you three different tanks, right? Uh, three different vehicles. Yep. It builds the BRDM2. Is that right? Is it the two? Yes. Which is the scout car version. The Gaskin and the... Spandrel. Spandrel, which has got an early, it's an early anti-tank. Yep. This thing is dirt I don't know, these cars are stuck together. <laughs> I've got a fitter and a tank battalion. Now in here, I'm just looking. We oh, it appears we're only getting stats for the Gaskin, which is which is one of the things. Um, so uh, you're a you're a tank museum type guy, Mike. Tell us a little bit about this vehicle if you know yeah, anything well, about it. Well, you you gave me the heads up, and I did um, recently visit. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the BRDMs are in the conservation centre, and it wasn't open on my day of my visit. Oh, boo! So basic vehicle, four wheeled, four wheel drive. Mm. Um, doesn't show it on the model, but some variants actually had donkey wheels on the side. Donkey wheels. So you could jack down an extra two wheels, so they would come down out of the hull. Right. Make it an eight-wheeled vehicle, so four on each side. But there's no power in these wheels, it's no. just about spreading load. Yeah, and they would come down from inside. Right. Later vehicles did away with those, because obviously it's a lot of space inside the hull. Yeah. So the basic BRDMs are 14.5mm heavy machine gun in a turret. Mm. Uh, the Gaskin is a four SA-9 anti-aircraft missiles. And the Spandrel is five anti-tank weapons. Missiles, yeah. yeah. So the card you get in here, um, I, I'll check, is for the Gaskin. And I think if you've only got one pair of these, it's possibly your best use. The beauty of this, the SA-9 Gaskin, it's integral to a lot of units, which is great. It's And it's dirt cheap. A pair of these costs you one point. Yeah. And it's going to put some anti-aircraft in your force. Now the truth of the matter is, this thing has got a skill and a courage rating of four, it's hit on a three and has got one point of front armour. <laughs> um, it's got a tactical move of ten and a cross country dash of only eighteen because it's wheeled, not tracked. Crosses on a four, it ain't going anywhere <laughs> difficult, certainly enough there's a pair of them. Um, but you get a 48 inch range with this AA missile, the Gaskin. Um, it's got two shots and a firepower of five up, and it's guided AA, so you can shoot supersonic aeroplanes with it, right? Now, you're probably not going to bring them down, but you might. Yeah. One point, mate. What yeah. do you think? It's, it's an interesting, the, the SA-9, it's a low-altitude, short-range air defence, probably 4 miles, 11,000 feet. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably more against your, your A-10s and your anti-tank yeah, helicopters. Yeah. Um, uh, Generally, it's very. But if in, in you know, depending because team the team Yankee game goes from today to the 1950s, yeah. right? And there's 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 definitely in that within that time scale a lot of people that are still dropping bombs and they're coming that close. Yeah. Now you might not stop them from dropping a bomb, but you can get some shots off while they do. Yeah, make it difficult for them. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting thing about this is the later versions, the engine was in the rear. So the only access was through the driver and the commander's turret hull, uh, uh, hatches. Is, is there an internal load? It's not got an auto loader, has it? No. It, so there's um, a guy inside yeah. who can't get out? Yeah. Nice. And of course, the, touch, the, the, guy. the hatches are at the front, so if you've driven towards the enemy and come under fire... Right, where the fire <laughs> is, is probably the... Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, there's a lot not to like about this. But it's cheap, though. Yeah. In, in, in most of the forces, like you say, it'll give you a small air defence... Yeah. Value yeah, of two points, you can take yeah. four of them. Um, now, what, what, once you've got four, you can take them. Uh, the BRDM is, is, I think, similar, it's one point and it's a scout car. Um, the problem with using it as a scout car is it's got such low mobility with that cross check that you, you, you might not be able to put it where you need to put it. 
Yeah. Does you it know. have scout rule or anything like that? Mm, I think so, yeah. So you can you, you may put it in advance, maybe, and then... Yeah, but to make that spearhead rule, if you have to go into cover to get there, it's probably going to fail it. Yeah. Is, it, is really the point. And there are there are more capable ones. And the anti-tank anti -tank version is, is, is pretty decent. But again, if you come up against a sort of 1990s force, you just you just can't deal with it, and they are hit quite easily. Yeah, they hit on a three, and they've got no real no real defense. But you know, the, the nice time around, I like the fact that in a lot of the Soviet kits, the newer ones, they've been shoving a couple of these in because they make a lot of different things. So between them, you can have the three different versions, and sometimes yeah. it's just nice to have. You just need a model on the board, you know. Sometimes, yeah. especially in the late game with objectives or whatever, and yeah. this can do that for a few points. So that was the SA9 gas game. Right. What do you want next? Uh, so let's go down the scale to the T55 AM2. T55 AM2. Right. right. So again, that's that's a older kit. I really should write the dates down on these. No, no, 2017. Yeah. 2017. So T55 AM2. This is. This is the Horde player's dream, sir. Yeah. She's got a front is hit on a three skill of four, courage of four, 14 front armor, which to a Flames of War player sounds like a lot, but to a Team Yankee player, that is rubbish. Uh, nine side and two top armor. It's only a 100 mil main gun, which has got uh, 17 anti tank and two up firepower, laser range fire, and slow firing. But five of these, which is how many you get in the box, cost you a mighty six points. <laughs> you can get 10 of them cost 16 points yeah these things are filthy cheap filthy yeah. cheap <laughs> but that's because they can't penetrate anything yeah and can be penetrated by everything else but you can fill the board with them yeah so the the am2 variant yeah um the original t55 was exported and then the T-62s and the T-72s came online, mm. but some nations couldn't afford them or couldn't field them. Yeah. So the AM-2 is an upgrade package to yes. bring these into a little bit more line. And I think that's where it gets like a thermal sight and a rangefinder yeah. and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Because the T-55, and, you, and you'll see it if you look at the vehicle, it, it really is... A, T-34, T-44, T-54 essentially come out the same design bureau with, with strong influences. Indeed, some of the same people. It's really just an iteration of a 1930s tank. Obviously, the components are all better. The metallurgy's got better. It's engineered to a higher standard. The, the, you know, but it's still using that same design philosophy. Where T sixty two, you start to move away, starting to move away from that a lot more. And these, you talked about twenty thousand. The, these are got like, is it something like seventy thousand of these made? There's in extraordinary numbers of them. Um, thirty five thousand T fifty fours and twenty seven thousand five hundred T fifty fives. 13,000 by China, 11,000 by Czechoslovakia, 10,000 by Poland. So yeah, these, these are made in vast, <laughs> vast numbers and continue to be in service. So, um, T55, this is also one of the first vehicles, that, you know, like BMP, it's coming that, it, it's um, uh, nuclear, biological and chemical warfare is like the new, the new thing yeah. that we're all going to think about. So this vehicle is, is capable of fighting fully enclosed and so forth, allegedly, for maybe 10 minutes before everyone dies yeah. of dehydration or overheating or whatever. That's T-55. It's nice to see them in here. Um, the role of T-55 and Team Yankee, I think, it, it continues to be... As an actual main battle tank, it's, it's terrible. It's arcane. It's really old. But as you'll find, if you come up against expensive light vehicles with sophisticated modern weapons... They're wasted yeah. on a thing like this, but something like this can shoot them. And still yeah. a 100 mil gun. I don't care how good that 12 millimeters of aluminium is on your armored <laughs> personnel carrier, is my 100 mil gun is going right through it, mate. But then if you put it in, you know, we, we, we talk about the historical relationship of the tanks, but if you put it into get war game turns, mm. you're firing 10 dice. Per yes. round instead of five. So probability yes. Yes. of needing the higher number comes into it. So... And the yeah. relatively close ranges we've had on the tabletop means that getting a side shot 
because it's, yeah. it's much more practical with these than it ought to be. Now, having played a little bit with T55s, as, a, as an abstract concept, it probably it seems like a really good idea. And they are very difficult to fight against. They really are because of just the, the sheer volume. But they're not that easy to use because you quickly run out of table space. Yeah. To put that many, you know, two and a half inch long vehicles on the table and be able to move a un other units, they quickly become a real clutter problem. But they're also a real bullet soak. Um, I like having a, a lump of them as a kind of reserve unit or, or an early deploy unit that I'm not expecting to achieve anything. It's just about having more meat on the table, you know? Yeah. Working well alongside things like T80, where you're just not going to get many vehicles. Anyway, that's that's the T55, the AM2. Now there is in here also the T55 AM2 Raketenpanzer, and that's the one that's got the AT10 Stabber missile. Now, precisely how many of these were ever actually issued is uh, is uh, subject to some debate. But this brings the firepower of your um, T-55. Normally the missiles in Soviet tanks are purely designed to extend the range. Yeah, they have similar performance characteristics to the gun. It's not like they're for different target types, it's like the missiles just got significantly longer range. But the AT-10 Stabber is a significantly better missile than the main gun, because it's only got a 100mm gun. Um, it's 21 anti-tank power and a 3 at firepower on the two. And these you can only take a single company off, and that's five, six, or seven vehicles for eight, ten, or twelve. So they they're going, they're pushing towards two points rather than one and a half points a model. But that firepower improvement is significant. So is that a single fire round, or is it? Yeah, yeah, thing? and stationary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not great. Um, but what, what I like about that is that's the kind of points that you pay for things like Gopher with comparable missiles. And they don't have any armor. Yeah. You know, um, they can take a single combat. And I think that's uniquely East German. It's, or is it just that, yeah, I think it is. It's, it's not just that the rocket, the word Raketenpanzer is East German. I think the other nations don't have that option. That's an yeah. East German only thing. Um, you can, uh, you just might mention it as well, we mentioned the sprue. You have multiple turret options. You can build the vanilla T55, T54, 55. There's some debate among rivet heads about why well, you tell the difference between a T54 and a T55. Um, I, I, I don't know. Some of them have muzzle brakes on and things like that, but um, they're fundamentally the same vehicle. Yeah. Right, what do you want next then, Matt? Are we moving on? We're moving on to the... Uh, Aircraft. To the aircraft. So, playing Flames of War, um, I know there's strike aircraft, not used them in any game. Never yeah. used them. Never used them at all, so Never it's, used it's a new no. new rules to us. James brought some Stermovix ones. They were horrific. Yeah. But we got the rules wrong. Because I, he fired his cannons on the Stermovix, and he fired at the top armour of my Tiger and blew it up. That seems reasonable, right? You don't hit top armour with planes, no. cannons... You hit side armor, apparently. It'd be strafing because you'd, you'd be not firing a single shot. You'd... Yeah. So, because yeah. um, the the Stenovics are really cheap, because the chance of them actually turning up is really quite low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to roll for that. It's not like they come around every turn. Um, but also, if you want to attack the top armor, you have to bomb it. Yeah. And you know how bomb acquisition uh, it works like ranging in of, of artillery, and that's skill based. And these planes ain't got no skill, so they'll fly <laughs> over. Fail to acquire a target and fly off again. Um, yeah. So they weren't actually as dangerous as, as they yeah. played out in our game. But. Mill 24 Hind. The, uh, right, go on, tell us what the mill stands for. Miletovich <laughs> something or other. But, Some Russian factory. But the wonderful thing about the NATO classifications, all helicopters in Russian and Soviet forces start with an H, because H for helicopter. H for helicopter, um, absolutely. We'll be doing the fitter in a minute, which is a fighter. Yeah, so absolutely. So the Mi twenty four Hind. Then, if you wear the sprue, um, I'll tell them the stats. I like that. I mean, who doesn't? I watched Rambo as a kid, right? Of course, I like Hinds. <laughs> of course, I like Hinds. I mean, it just looks like get a kid, give him a give him a Meccano sense, and make a helicopter out of this. It'd have be <laughs> pylons with loads of weapons on. It'd be massive. Look like it shouldn't fly. Um, so the Hind is hit on a three, like most uh, most equipment in the in the Red Army. Aircraft save is four up, skill and courage are four. It's got the AT-6 spiral missile, which 
you can shoot on the move. That's exciting. It's got 23 anti-tank power and three up firepower. It's also got a Gatling gun, which has got three sh uh, three shots, anti-tank five, five up firepower, but you can fire that out of helicopters, which is significant. And then the UB-32 57mm rockets, fire a salvo template. That's not the artillery template. There's a bigger one that's a foot across. Um, it's got three up anti-tank rain, six up firepower, and is one shot. So you can't... I think they are capable of firing single or or pairs of rockets at targets, but in the game, the way it's modeled is, this is a single artillery salvo. Yeah. Um, and truth, I'm not I'm not sure how often you're gonna do that. With the anti-tank power of three, you're not really firing it at vehicles. And with a firepower of six, you might fire at infantry on the move. Suppose you've got a big blob of infantry, you know one of those really big platoons where you've got like 13 in it, and they all fit under that template and they've got up to move, that probably would be quite effective. The points, they're only five points for two and 10 points for four. And that will be, if you speak to somebody who's played Team Yankee, they'll say that's because you take a pair of Heinz, you lose them both in the first turn. <laughs> you want to use Heinz, you probably want to try and get six. Yeah. That yeah, these gems can have got to four. I think the Soviets can take them in sixes. But it's such an iconic weapon system, right? It is. I've, um, uh, many years ago, I saw four Czech ones of these at, at Fairford mm -hmm. and they were basically doing ballet nose to nose. Wow. Going round each other and the, 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 the manoeuvrability for the size yeah. is quite extraordinary. You know, you see the things like the Lynx and the AH-64s and what they can mm. do. This is twice the size and still... Yeah, definitely. And, and it carries, um, some of them carry up to eight troops as well. So, mm. um, of course, in the old Soviet philosophy, this is a tank. Is that right? Yeah. Because when they're looking at the classifications, you know, a tank you can drive and hold a spot of land, an armoured fighting vehicle you can drive, troops get out, take the land. Helicopter does the same. So they were more right. attached to the tank units. I don't think you can hold ground with a helicopter. You park it and the troops get out and shoot. So And then the helicopter buggers off. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're a moron. But this is that's the, that's the way the Soviets dealt with them. They were attached yeah. actually to the tank units yeah. Yeah. as a support unit rather than being yeah. Um, army aviation that you called in. Yeah. So you you had your desert. That kind of evolution of doctrine. Yeah. Well, again, it, it's kind of during Korea that people sort of really began to see yeah. this this helicopter th gig. It brings a lot of flexibility. Yeah. A lot of flexibility. But when they got to Afghanistan, is that they did away with all the armored vehicles and just flew around in those. So because of the mobility. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, but I think people seriously thought that air mobile yeah. was going to be what it was all going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as a, as a weapon system, it's great. As a kit, what do I remember from building this? Um, it wasn't terrible, but, um, and the, the, the way that the blades work on the, the helicopter blades, it's quite good insofar as you can see, it's, it's put as many of them as it can fit on the sprue, and then you have to attach these other two so that the sprue isn't enormous and will go in a regular box. But it is keyed here. Those two blades, you don't just sort of glue them against yeah. a flat end. It's actually got a kind of, um, as almost like a tongue and groove and a peg. So you get the right blade in the right position. Yeah. That bit was fine. The main helicopter assembly was fine. What was more tricky was the spigot that goes in here and you then connect to the, so there's kind of rotor assembly and then the, you're going to stick a magnet on the bottom of this peg, this this pin, yeah. to put them in. I mean, you're going to stick a magnet if you want to stick a magnet. It, um, I don't normally magnetize things because it's a lot faff, but storing them is a lot easier <laughs> if you've magnetized the rotors. Yeah, and that that's that's why I did that. Um, but yeah, the it's actually the the spigot that holds the the rotor assembly on is the fragile part. And I think you needed to be careful with the rocket pods to get the alignment correct because the wings are swept at an angle while you're assembling them. What will look straight while you're assembling them will look <laughs> crooked when it, when you mount it on the wings. When you mount the wings to yeah. the helicopter, that am I making sense? Yeah, there shouldn't be at right angles to the wing. No, yeah. no, there should, there, should, there should be at slight <laughs> angles. Should, on each wing, they should be in line with one another but at a slight angle. 
Um, I'm waffling now. If you look at their assembly instructions, you'll see um, for it to look right when it's built, it needs to look wrong while you're building it. Yeah, basically in, in terms of the, in terms of the angles, but it was it wasn't a terrible kit, and it is because it's such a big model. So they made as a design choice, Flames of War and Team Yankee. They've done their model their aircraft in one one hundred forty fourth because they don't want them to take up too much, you know, yeah. real estate on the table. But they've kept helicopters at one one hundredth, and that means this model's like behind massive. Yeah, um, it really is huge. You put it next to a T-55 and you're like, that is a big, big piece of equipment. Um, there's some there's some flight stands. I, I, I forget sometimes that some of this vanilla stuff some people haven't seen. So um, yeah. your flight stand comes, there's, there's two parts of the flight stand. Um, you will have magnets in your flight stand bags if you get one of these. They're tiny and they will roll away on the floor. So look <laughs> for them before you... Don't just tip everything out. You'll, you'll lose your magnets. Um, so you get a long and a short-stemmed option uh, usually with their yeah. flight stands. But the basic flight stand comes with the short stem. But it's got a few options. The, there's a little groove in the stem for you to put your magnet. Yeah, and it fits in there nicely. That's good. But sometimes uh, there's a there's a turret peg, which some of their older kits yeah. may use, and then you've got this other adapters here, and they're for so basically this flight stand. If you're using some third party kits, yeah, they they they're able. These are able to match the underside of most aircraft shapes. Bit like the old um, Airfix ball and socket one that used to. Yeah, but th this is this is more like collar yeah. and socket. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely, you got that. And then the, yeah. there's there's a, a longer stem version of it. It's nice. The only snag about these, I find, is um, clear plastic looks nice when you first take it out of the bag. When you stick it on a shelf for a couple of years, it's all dusty and it ain't clear anymore. Yeah, and after ten years, it's quite manky and it, and it kind of gets scratched by dust and yeah. so forth. Increasingly, feel I should just spray these black. As, as looking better than dull yeah. clear plastic and there's almost always because it's clear it's you know this is mass produced stuff there's always air bubbles in these yeah which again when it's clear that matters I'm not bothered about yeah. the structural consequences of that do you yeah. know what I mean but uh, yeah, the, they provide it you in clear you can always paint it the, yourself the, the footprint of the stand doesn't look too bad as well so we're about two inches by three so yeah even got a little, little uh, space for a token for yeah. high and low altitude and things like yeah. that. I have to admit, when I, when, I, when I started doing the research for this, you know, yeah. um, I, I, I fight a bomber. Fight a bomber? The fight a bomber has a very World War II aircraft carrier kind of idea. Yeah. What does that mean? It <laughs> means, well, th we, we don't need the fighters all the time, so we want everything to be able yeah. to carry a bomb. Should we say multi-role aircraft? But that that's quite high tech modern thing, yes, though, isn't it? Yeah, the, the stick with fighter bomber. I yeah, think, I think the tornado was the first thing that was um proper multi role, and then they made a dedicated ground attack and a defense of versions of them. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. absolutely. So this is yes, yeah. SU twenty two fitter seventeen twenty two because it's seventeen two different. So originally the seventeen, and then later on exports and upgrades turned it is into. Is it not the, that it's the SU seventeen in Soviet service? And the SU-22 and everybody else's. The, the export version, yes. The export version, yeah. yeah. So this uh, kit. You, yeah. uh, so the card. Let's let's do that bit first. Right, so it's hit on a three and it's got an aircraft save of five. So that means it dies easily <laughs> for a, for an aeroplane. In fact, it's, uh, yeah, the hind's got a four. So it dies easier than the hind. Although it is a supersonic aircraft, so you can't engage it with most weapons. So it's not quite that vulnerable. Um, you get a pair of these for three points. And that should give you an indication of how good they are. You can take them in flights of two, four, or six. So nine points to get you six of them. Four different weapon systems on this aircraft. You've got the 30 mil cannon, which is uh, moving rate of fire of three, anti-tank seven, and five up firepower. And you fire that at helicopters. All right. So, okay. It's an it's it's auto cannon. It's all right. You've got the 240 millimeter rockets, which fire as artillery with anti-tank power 7 and 2-up firepower. Now, I think artillery fires against top armour. 
So Ant's tank power 7 against top armor is pretty good. But to range in, you've still got to make a skill check. Yeah. Um, it's got 37 mil uh, rockets, which can fire a single salvo. So that's our bigger template. That's only got six up firepower. So that that's, you know, a fragmentation type approach. And then you have the option, the KH-25, which is what everybody is really fizzy about. That's a fairly modern, very powerful anti-tank weapon. That's got an anti-tank rating of 27. <laughs> a two up firepower, brutal guided and heat. But you do have to pay points for that. Um, and it basically doubles their points. They go from three for a pair to six for a pair. Bear in mind, planes are not on the table. You have to make the skill check for them to come in. If they're in reserves, you're not even starting until later, you know. Um, but what's nice about the Soviet aircraft is that you, this plane, for six points, a pair of these, you've got the you've got the possibility of destroying the most powerful weapons in the game, which might cost 15, 20 points a model. Odds are they're not going to do that. But what I like about these bigger, weaker forces is the ability to have... I've got some capability to deal with all problems. Having a pair of those, maybe they'll come in, maybe they won't. Yeah. But they might, as opposed to, yeah, you know, in, in other armies, you've got front armour of 23. I've got nothing that can deal with that. Game over. Thank you. Yeah. So just just reading through those two thirty millimeter cannons, each one had a maximum of eighty rounds each. Eighty. Eighty each. Yeah. Eight zero. Eight zero. <laughs> mm. But it, it did come with eight. Uh, and 12. it's got a rate of fire of dozens of rounds a yeah. minute, right? I yeah. mean, it's a thirty mil cannon. It's not got a rate of fire of five hundred rounds no. a minute, but yeah. And then there's a mix of twelve hard points, um, mm. so various combinations. Obviously, later on, the the Su twenty five Frogfoot is the the dedicated ground attack, which is styled on the American A-10. Yeah, so that why this one, this particular kit is, is of interest is this, although you can play it as Soviets, this is really intended to be for the miners. And a lot of that kind of stuff, they can only ever take as, as Soviet ones, yeah. as allied in rather than homogenous integral yeah. ones. So that one of the great, one of the things that has people pleased about seeing the fit uh, available is these are frontline units in Soviet mine in yeah. Warsaw Pact miners. Um, yeah. So the kit itself is it's a third party kit. I can't remember who it is. It might be Academy, somebody like that. The, this is a thing that they've been doing. Um, they can't produce everything that they want in plastic, but they realise that other people sometimes do. So that they've got yeah. you know having this stuff. I don't know whether it's built under license or whether they just buy them from them by the 10,000 or whatever. Um, and so if you build one of these, just be mindful of the fact that this is not a Wargamers kit, this is a model kit. There's a lot more parts than you might think. You don't need them all, and it isn't necessarily building the right version of the kit that you're wanting to play, which is why as well as the kit itself, you've got a small bag of Sciocast Bendy Resin. Um... <laughs> Thermoplastic, many words they have for this. This is that, that new resin yeah. material they're making their infantry out of. Um, and they've provided, so that, so Battlefront have made those so that when you build your fitter for the game, you've got the correct weapon. Yeah, weapons all the hard out. points storage, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, see why they've done that. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I'd say I have mixed feelings about this, but I really don't. If this, if the alternative to this is resin and metal, then this is better. I mean, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a model maker. I've made a lot of models, but they were for war games. And there's definitely when a kit has exceeded twenty parts, I'm yeah. starting to glaze over a little bit. <laughs> but when a kit is only available in resin and metal, especially when it's something where the where the the silhouette, you know, like an aeroplane, the chance that the wings are bent. Or not at the right angle, and yeah. things like with resin, or oh, you know. Um, so I'd, I'd take this every day of the week over that. Obviously, I'd prefer if they made a, made a simpler kit. But yeah, the only thing I remember from making kits like this from the Airfix is the some of them the fuselages you, you normally have to tape them when you glued them. Yes, 
Yes. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I haven't been one of the, I'm not providing, uh, not in a position to do that. Um, I'm no longer, I come to think about it. I'm not even sure if polystyrene cement, which is what we used to make these kind of kits out of, is the same thing as plastic glue. No, it's not. No. I, I know the old... But that used to melt it as well. Yeah. It wasn't the same principle. So I don't... I, I, yeah. Mmm. I should build one of these before we do another unboxing in the future <laughs> and try it with plastic glue and then try and find out yeah. the answer to that question. Because I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have it in. And it's nice to, you know... You got a pair of these for three points. Six points if you take the Mega Missile. Yeah. If you, you turn up for a club game and it seems that the other guy has brought his T80s, you're going, oh, well, actually, I'll, yeah. I, I do have these. I can do something yeah. about it. So, as I say, I've never played Team Yankee. I'm experienced back in the 80s of six mil oh. um, battles of the um, Battle of the Rhine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a if, you, if you're going to play this for the first time and you want some inspiration, there's a couple of good books. There's a, a book called the, the the Third World War by right. General Sir John Hackett, written in 1979 mm -hmm. and based in August 85. So it's a, right, yeah. a battle of northern Germany mm -hmm. based on the time. And obviously the, um, the other one I've read is Red Storm Rising by Tom Clancy. That's more of a global yeah, story, but yeah. there is some quite interesting... Yeah, it's more, it's more geopolitical yeah, than... Um, that, that's in 93, and one of the things in there is that Clancy talks about a thing called the Frisbee, right? Which is a stealth aircraft, right? <laughs> okay. And um, I think they were called it the F nineteen, right? Um, at the time, and then later on, that became the the F one one seven, right? But he hinted at it in those books. So yeah, there's plenty of you know what if stories of the yeah. Third World War. And one of the things that they've done with these because they've, I mean, they've changed the branding of it now. It used to be called Team Yankee. It's now. World War Three team Yankee, but they're not wedding themselves to the historicals in this in this regard. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing. I think it does two things. One is it means you can step outside of conflicts within living memory, you know, and that and that and that's a tough call for a lot of people, you know, conflicts yeah. conflicts going on today and conflicts in 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 the recent past. People are not necessarily very comfortable fighting those. And yeah. good guys and bad guys. Second World War, Nazis bad. We're mm. good, clean. I'm happy yeah. with this. Further back, it was long ago. People were different. <laughs> 1970s, like people should have known better than to do this. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. But but so kind of giving it a grounding in fiction gives it a space to say you're not necessarily you're not necessarily doing historical battles. You yeah. can look at this entirely as a fictional experience. But it also means that they can take the stories in different directions. They can do things over time. They can put in things that didn't really exist or things which were historically a failure. A bit like the mid-war monsters they've yes. just released. You know, uh, you, you, the, the Porsche Tiger, they make a model for it. Everybody, you know, is yeah. interested in the model, but they never saw service. And well, this is a setting where never saw service isn't such a big yeah. deal. Because their plan, when they announced, when they did their announcement at Christmas about their plan for the year, they're normally really clear about the first six months. They're a bit more vague about the next six months. But they have talked about Wolverines. And what they're talking about is that movie. Yeah. With the um, American football team fight a Russian invasion in America. Yeah. That, that, that stuff is that stuff is in the pipeline. Patrick Swayze, wasn't it? I, I, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I can't remember. What's the movie called? Gosh, that's bothering me now. Red, um, is it Red, Red Dawn? Storm? Red Dawn. Red, Red Dawn, Dawn yeah. Red Dawn, right. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a there's a remake of it, but yeah, they, yeah, yeah, it's probably even worse. Yeah, the, the America uh, Americas are invaded, but Canada's still neutral, so <laughs> Right, of course. Um, apart from that you get the uh, tank commander sprue, which we've seen before. Uh, it's the same one you get with the World War II. They've got those kind of strange leather helmets. Um so, Mike. It's, it's, it's the same price as all the others. You're going to get in here, what, let's do a quick check, two, 10, 14. 12 tanks. 14 vehicles and two and four aircraft. Yeah. yeah. So you get 14 vehicles in here, four aircraft, some tank commanders, a mountain of unit cars. But they kind of need to do that. If they're going to sell this as the... You know, they yeah. could package it separately for East German, uh, Polish, whatever. But they've done the right thing. They've yeah. given you, they've given you all the cards. What, do, what do you, what do you think? I can tell you, as an army, it only comes out like something like fifty points. 
Yeah, it's from from my readings of um, and like I say, playing back in the the eighties, the other the other versions of that. It's it's what you expect. Um, the more modern tanks will be your elite units, your guard units, your your, your secondary tanks, anti aircraft, infantry. You've got the I haven't seen your video yet, but you've got the um, the, the BTRs and the BMPs. Mm. You know the tractor infantry. Um, yeah, the the the, the motor, parallel motor rifle this. companies. I think they're called, aren't yeah. they? Um, or styled on. So, yeah, it, it, it fits it. As I say, I've just not played Team Yankee yet. Well, maybe we have to do a game at some stage. Yeah, um, and and uh, if you want to go for the traditional criticism that says, "Well, there's no infantry in this box," then no, nope, this is the box with all the tanks and airplanes in. There's another box with all the infantry in. If you want the infantry, you go with go with go with the other box. And I like I like that. Um, I'm not. I'm not fizzy about it. I don't think it's amazing. I do like the fact that it's got a nice range of vehicles because I think to an existing, someone with an existing collection who's interested in getting some T-72Bs, having a look at it, it's not that the other stuff isn't useful. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice, nice range, the box and stuff that's in there. I think for me, it's, it's all right, you know, I got a seven out of 10. It's not amazing, but it's all right, all right. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. Hello! If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you. Oh, I knew I was going to do that.